Chibiko woke up feeling very excited. He rushed through his morning shower, ate a healthy breakfast of hot oats with banana, and brushed his teeth so quickly that he got toothpaste all over his face. Then he went out and walked to Button Park. There were lots of people at the park doing different things. Some children were flying kites. Others were having a picnic. Some of the bigger kids were hanging upside down from the monkey bars. But this wasn't what Chibiko was here for today. Today, he was at the park to play soccer. He walked to an open stretch of grass with goalposts at each side and introduced himself. Today's game would be between Team Grapefruit and Team Banana Split. He was told that he would be playing for Team Banana Split and handed his uniform with the number 7 on it. Chibiko walked onto the field with his teammates and then went to put his yellow jersey on. He still had it over his head when the whistle blew. Chibiko heard the soccer ball fly over him and then the sound of his teammates running and shouting. But his jersey was stuck. He couldn't see! He heard the ball again, followed by a rush of busy feet. It sounded like everyone was having fun. Chibiko tugged and tugged and tugged at his singlet, but it wouldn't come down over his face. The ball whooshed past again, and a member of Team Grapefruit nearly ran straight into Chibiko. This time, he pulled and pulled and pulled up on his singlet, but he couldn't pull it off either. Again, Chibiko heard the ball zoom past him, followed by the footsteps of his teammates. Well, I guess I'll have to just do my best, he thought to himself, and ran after the sound of the ball. Playing soccer without being able to see was very hard, but Chibiko ran up and down the field, doing his best to follow everyone and to help his team. There was a cheer from the Grapefruit team. They had scored a goal. Chibiko was worried for his team. But soon after, there was a cheer from Team Banana Split as well. They had also scored a goal. The game was tied. Both teams had one goal each. Chibiko was getting very tired. And he still had his shirt blocking his eyes but he continued to run after the ball. Then, a whistle blew. Chibiko had been told before the game that the late whistle would mean that there was only a little bit of time left. But the whistle was so loud that Chibiko couldn't hear where the ball was, and so all he could do was stay still and listen as hard as he could. Suddenly, Chibiko felt a hard thwack against his head. He had been hit by the soccer ball. It really hurt, but as it bounced away again, he heard the banana split team cheering. The ball had bounced off of Chibiko's noggin and into the goal. He had won the game. All of his teammates came around to congratulate him. Soccer is pretty fun, Jibiko thought. Even when things go wrong, they can still go right. One day, Chibiko woke up feeling a little bit cold. At first, he was worried that he might be sick, but when he got out of bed and looked out of the window, he noticed that there were white dots fluttering down outside his house. It was snowing. 
Feeling very excited, Chibiko took a nice hot shower, ate some breakfast, brushed his teeth, and then searched his closet for something warm to wear. Uh, no? Nope. Perhaps not. Something else, maybe? No, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, oh dear. Chibiko dug and dug and dug through his closet, making a terrible mess of his bedroom as he did so, until finally he found what he was looking for. Ah, that's better. Now that he was properly dressed, Chibiko could go outside and play in the snow. He opened his front door and walked out into the winter wonderland that had come to visit his home. Much to Chibiko's surprise, even though the ground was white and snow was falling from the sky, it was still quite sunny outside. What a nice day it was turning out to be. While he had seen snow in TV shows and movies before, this was the first time that it had ever snowed in Chibiko's town. He wondered if he should go to the park and see if people were having a snowball fight. But he was a bit scared to wander too far from his house when it was snowing so much. And so he instead decided to fall back into the snow and make an angel. Poof! Ouch! Chibiko had always imagined that snow was soft. Like white cotton candy from the sky, only less sticky. It turned out that it was a little bit harder and a bit more icy than he had been expecting. Still, it had cushioned his fall enough and so he waved his arms up and down and created a beautiful snow angel. Nice angel, a voice said. Want to try making something else? Chibiko sat up and saw Danny standing beside what looked like the base of a snowman. Sure, Chibiko said. What do you want me to do? Can you roll a nice big snowball to use as a body? Danny asked. I'll make the head. Chibiko gave a salute like he had seen on a movie once. Can do, Captain, he said, and then set about rolling a nice big snowball to use as a snowman's body. As he rolled, he wondered what they might name their snowman. Tom, Brett, Angelus, Yuki, what if it was a snow woman? Jessica? Lara? Marlene? And what would they dress it in? Maybe he had a spare scarf? Did they have a top hat? Would a snow man or woman want to wear a jacket? Perhaps he shouldn't worry about what it would wear until after he had figured out what he and Danny would use for things like buttons, eyes, and a nose. Did he have any carrots in the house? Would celery make an okay nose, or would it just look strange? Maybe he could use pieces of chocolate for the buttons and the eyes. But he wondered if Danny would be tempted to eat those. He knew that he himself would be. Chibiko! Chibiko, where are you? Chibiko could hear Danny calling his name. I'm just here, Chibiko answered. Where? Danny asked. Here, Chibiko said again. Oh, Danny said. Chibiko had spent so much time thinking while he was rolling his snowball that instead of helping to make a snowman, he had turned himself into one. It was very dark outside, but this was because it is dark 
all winter in the North Pole. It was actually still before dinner time, and Santa Danny was double checking that he had all of the presents that he would need for the night. It was a very big number, much higher than Chibiko could count to. Fortunately, although it was very cold, the sky was clear and many stars twinkled beautifully against it. Santa Danny finished counting and looked up at his sleigh. The elves had prepared a chicken for him to eat later, but he expected that he would fill up on milk and Christmas cake and cookies and whatever else might be left out for him while he worked. He put the chicken into a spare pink gift box and climbed aboard. It had been a tough year, so he had granted the reindeer a special holiday break on the moon. To help him out, they had left him some magic dust which should help the sleigh fly. One way to find out. Onward Dasher and Dancer, Prancer and... Wait, you're not here, Santa Danny said. I guess... Let's just go? The sleigh took off at great speed. It looked wonderful, flying against a backdrop of sparkling stars. But then, it became cloudy. Santa Danny was a bit sad that he couldn't see the sky, but at least it was still safe to fly. But then it started to become snowy. It was very cold, but Santa Danny kept flying. Then it became rainy. Santa Danny had to be very careful not to fall as he dug up a blanket to throw over the toy sack just to be extra sure that all of the presents wouldn't get too wet. But then, just as he was almost finished, it became very, very windy. The wind caught an untouched corner of the blanket and Santa Danny's sled started to spiral out of control. It spun towards the ground, just outside of the city. Crash. Santa Danny bounced across the ground. Everything was blurry and he felt quite dizzy. He stood up and tried to get his bearings. Where was his sleigh? Never mind that, there were presents scattered everywhere. He would have to pick them all up first. And he would have to hurry, he had many deliveries to make. He found a yellow present beside a giant candy cane. He was very hungry, so he ate the candy cane. Then he found an orange present next to an old stocking. He was still hungry, so he ate the stocking as well. After this, he found a blue present next to a tree. He still wasn't full, so he ate the tree. Finally, he could see the sleigh. There was a pink present just in front of it. He didn't want to eat his sleigh, so he ate the present. Ah, full at last. Chibiko woke up very suddenly. He was sweating. He looked at the time. <gasps> he had overslept. On Christmas Day! Danny was visiting for a big lunch! He had to hurry to get ready. Chibiko had only finished getting the plates out when his doorbell rang. Happy Holidays! Danny said. Merry Christmas! Chibiko replied and then paused. Is something wrong? Danny asked. I... I had a strange dream, Chibiko said. You were Santa, and you crashed, and you lost some presents, and you ate many strange things, and I... I... I overslept, he admitted. 
Lunch isn't ready yet. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it, Danny said. It looks like the real Santa left you a present. Let's open that first. Chibiko went and picked up his gift. It was certainly nicely wrapped. I wonder what it is, Danny said. I got a basketball. Chibiko was silent. Well, Danny said, what is it? It's... It's, Chibiko said, his voice was full of disbelief. It's chicken! How lucky, Danny said. It smells good. We can have lunch after all. I guess we can, Chibiko said happily. The chicken was cooked perfectly. And so Chibiko and Danny enjoyed a delicious holiday lunch together. Although as they ate, Chibiko couldn't help but wonder if his friend had a very important, maybe even magical, secret. One morning, when Chibiko woke up, he felt... different. He wasn't sure how he felt different, and so he got up and then... OUCH! His bottom really hurt. He went to his bathroom to look in the mirror. It was very red and sore. Did it feel different to touch? He closed his eyes, reached his arm behind himself, and... OUCH! It hurt a lot. He took a cool shower, because hot water also hurt his bottom, and then went into the kitchen where his friend, Danny, was waiting for him. He had stayed the night on Chibiko's sofa, and had decided to make them both pancakes for breakfast. Good morning, Danny said cheerfully. I made pancakes. Morning, Chibiko replied with a grumpy voice. What's up? Danny asked as he moved their pancakes to the table. Is something wrong? It's a bit embarrassing, but my bottom hurts, Chibiko replied. Oh, Danny said. My head was hurting earlier, but it's better now. Have you seen a doctor yet? Chibiko shivered. He didn't like going to see the doctor. Actually, maybe it's not that bad, Chibiko said as he sat down to eat his pancakes. Ouch! Sitting down hurt a lot. He tried again. Ouch! Are you sure you're okay? Danny asked. Of course I am, Chibiko said. I'll just eat my pancakes over here. Chibiko took his pancakes away from the table and tried to eat them standing up. They fell onto the floor. Plop. Danny looked at Chibiko, looked down at the pancakes, and then looked back up at his friend. Okay, Chibiko grumbled, I'll go and see a doctor. Danny went with Chibiko to his local doctor. Inside, Chibiko stood up and read an old issue of Ice Cream Monthly until it was his turn to see the doctor. I see what the problem is, the doctor said. It looks like you sat on something triangular. It must have started to hurt during the night. That happens sometimes. Will I be okay? Chibiko asked. Of course, the doctor said. Just let me pat you up and get you a lollipop. No allergies, I take it? 
and you'll be right as rain soon enough. It may take a little bit of time to stop hurting completely, but there, that's done. I think you should start feeling better very soon. Chibiko did feel better, especially since the doctor had given him some spare lollipops, which he and Danny ate while watching movies later that day. One morning, Chibiko woke up with a thirst for adventure. Somehow, he felt braver than he had other days, and as he ate his breakfast, he thought about what he should do with this day. Watch TV? No, he wanted to do something exciting himself, not watch other people do such things. Maybe play video games? No, still not good enough. Then, his phone rang. Hello, Chibiko answered. Hi Chibiko, it's Danny. I'm going to Ninja Hot Dog Land in a bit. Would you like to go with me? So, Danny was going to the new Ninja Hot Dog theme park. Chibiko smiled. A theme park, that was perfect. Sure, he said. Let's go on lots of scary rides. Uh, okay, Danny said nervously. There's a bus leaving in a few minutes. I'll see you there then? Sure thing, Chibiko said. He hung up his phone and went out to meet his friend so that they could go to Ninja Hot Dog Land together. After arriving, they bought their tickets and went through the gate which was actually the arm of the yellow ninja hot dog. Chibiko looked at the map while Danny went to get them some caramel popcorn and churros. There was a ring toss, some bumper cars, something where you sat down and watched a virtual reality movie, there was also a swing set that spun around by itself, and a roller coaster. Here you go! Danny had returned with their snacks. Chibiko took his popcorn, and they walked and munched together. Yum, yum, yum! Danny said while eating three churros at once. So, what are we riding first? The roller coaster! Chibiko exclaimed with so much energy that he threw his popcorn everywhere. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 Danny said. Here we are, Chibiko said, and the line is very short. How lucky! The roller coaster was huge. It even had five loop the loops. Yeah, Danny said. L lucky! It was soon their turn, and Chibiko climbed into the roller coaster and pulled down his protector. Are you ready, buddy? Chibiko said. Danny? Chibiko couldn't find his friend. Where's Danny? Is he down here? No. Behind me. Uh, maybe to my left? Boy, he's really good at hiding. Maybe he's under the seat. But that would be a dangerous place to say. Danny, where are you? Right here, Danny said. He was standing right beside Chibiko. Oh, Chibiko said. I thought I had looked there already. Are you ready? The ride must be about to start. What do you mean, Danny said. I got scared and didn't go on. You've already ridden it. Really? Chibiko asked. He wondered how many other people had ridden a roller coaster without even noticing it. He supposed that explained why his tummy felt a little bit like it was upside down. You're pretty brave, Danny said. But can we maybe just go and play the ring toss game now? 
Sure, Chibiko said, remembering that it was important to also do what his friends wanted to do. So long as we can go past the toilets on the way there. <laughs>